Good afternoon. My name is Brian Lapine, and today I'm going to be talking to you about my <laughs> for this class. Uh, so first, uh, let me tell you about my topic. My topic is, what are the ethical and separately the legal limitations or restrictions on the NFL in regards to their responsibility to help retired players who have significant health issues, specifically concussions, received during their time in the league, and how are those limitations or restrictions determined? So just to go on a little outline of my presentation, I'm going to first talk about what's, what is a concussion, what are some long-term effects, uh, what are some of the prevention efforts taken by the NFL to help uh, their players, their active players, uh, some of the summary of the NFL player benefits that they have to help their retired players. Uh, I'm going to talk about the NFL settlement of 2013, um, and then Notable players affected. You'll see. I have a, I have a couple boxes on my handout that will talk about that show some uh, more high-profile players and how they're affected by uh, concussions. And then my conclusion. So first off, what is what is a concussion? Well, a concussion is a traumatic brain injury that alters the way your brain functions. It usually happens from a blow to the head. Uh, it's when the brain actually moves inside your skull. And uh, symptoms will include headaches, memory loss, vomiting, problems with concentration, and problems with balance, coordination, stuff like that. Some long-term effects are memory loss, uh, CTE, ALS, Alzheimer's, dementia, depression, uh, and a lot of that stuff hits you way, hits you a lot later in life. You know, once you're an older and out of the NFL for. 20, 25, 30, 40 years. You never know. It depends. So, what are some of the prevention efforts taken by the NFL? Well, pre-2011, there really weren't any. Um, that is when, you know, the concussion and sports thing really came to the limelight. The media took over, really let the public know. And, you know, the league started really t taking concussions seriously due to uh, players' health, you know, in their 50s, 60s, and 70s with these horrible diseases. So, uh, in 2011, the NFL established a concussion protocol uh, that all 32 teams had to oblige by. Before that, it was, you know, each team had their own protocol, and the doctors would say, you can play or you can't play, and that was it. So, the NFL wanted to make a unified protocol to really help their players and help keep them safe. So it's quoted as being the most important safety measure ever passed by the NFL. So they really thought about it. They really thought about the health and the safety of their players, and they implemented this rule. And basically, it's just you know a protocol on how teams have to handle concussions. Um, players... If a player is seen, hits his head, or has a collision that looks like it could cause a concussion, the players are then taken into the locker room and assessed by a member of the medical staff of the franchise and uh, an independent doctor that specializes in concussions and brain injuries and stuff like that. So uh, the assessment is pretty simple. You know, they're going to look for memory how your memory is your concentration your balance ask you questions like what day is it what time is it what, uh did who scored last did you win last week stuff like that to just see if you had any brain injuries and since they implemented it concussions have gone down i mean it's really worked it's really helped keep players safe so the nfl really uh stepped up and acted responsibly to help protect their players uh, next, I'm going to talk about some player benefits. So, uh, the NFL has a retirement plan called the Burt Bell and Pete Rizal NFL Player Retirement Plan, but it's not a very good one. It's you get once you're 55 years old, you get $425 a month multiplied by how many seasons you play in the NFL, and you get that monthly from 55 until you uh, till you pass away. The problem is that, you know, players in the NFL will retire and between the ages of 25 and 40. So you, you could be up to 30 years until you start seeing any of your retirement money. And if you are 
if you received a lot of concussions during the league and you were having traumatic brain injury later in life, that's not going to be enough to cover and help pay for your bills. A good thing is that the NFL has a foundation that they uh, support and actually kind of partner with called the NFL Player Care Association, which is an independent organization that's dedicated to helping retired players improve their quality of life. You know, they'll, do, they'll help players with finance problems, with medical problems, emotional problems, social problems. And they have a lot of different programs that all retired players can use. Problem is, depend, depending on the program, depends uh, on the eligibility of the athlete to see if they can be can go through the program. And if they can, the foundation will help them out. So it's a definitely a good step in the right direction, but there's a lot of criteria that have to be met has to be met in order for players to get help, which isn't uh, which shouldn't happen. I mean, if a player gets hurt in the league, uh, the league should be responsible for get, getting that player healthy and getting him better. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the NFL settlement that happened in 2013. So in 2013, the NFL made agreed to a 765 million dollar settlement over concussion-related brain injuries among its 18,000 retired players, agreeing to compensate victims, pay for medical exams, and uh, donate to a lot of concussion research. So this was a big win for everyone. The NFL was happy to do it. Uh, they stepped up to the plate, and they are, they are paying uh, their retired players who have in, uh, diseases such as ALS, dementia, uh, Alzheimer's that can be directly trace back to concussions and they're going to help pay for their medical bills, help pay for their medicine, their exams, which they should. I mean, these players are putting their bodies in line for their franchises, for the NFL. The NFL should be responsible for them. So, uh, my, th my, talking about my topic, my theory, my thinking is that the NFL is ethically and morally responsible to take care of their players. Uh, the common argument is that, you know, these are pro athletes. They make millions and millions of dollars. They should be able to save up and play, save up and, you know, know the risk they're taking. But a common misconception of all NFL players is that they make millions and millions of dollars. Just some facts uh, that I got were the average NFL salary is at $1.9 million. And that, you know, ranges from the minimum of 420000 to the highest paid player this year, which is $22 million. So it's the two opposite ends of the spectrum. I mean, $420,000 is a lot of money still, but $22 million is an unreal amount. So the fact that it can range between those two is pretty unreal. And then and also an interesting fact is that the average NFL career is only three years. So... If you're only playing three years, it's probably due because you're not as you're not that good. So you're gonna be making less money, but you're still gonna be, you know, practicing as much, playing as much. You're still susceptible to as many concussions and head injuries, and you're not gonna have the money later in life necessarily to pay for all that. So the NFL should be responsible for it. They should step up to the plate, and they are starting to. I mean, is there is there ethical duty to? help these athletes um so i hope you enjoyed my presentation and thank you for listening have a good day